In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With today we come together as always in joy before the Lord, but especially today as we celebrate the ordination, the holy priesthood. These are brothers who will be forever priests of Jesus Christ. And so we offer this Mass for them. They may be found faithful in fulfilling the sacred mission that is entrusted to them. And so let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who in your goodness bestowed on the bishop and martyr, Salopio Wish, the gift of pastoral charity, even to the point of shedding of his blood for Christ and his church, bestow on us also the grace to work faithfully in your vineyard and to experience his intercession in this life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers and their mother were arrested and were being compelled by the king under torture with whips and cords to partake of unlawful swine's flesh. The mother was especially admirable and worthy of honorable memory. Though she saw her seven sons perish within a single day, she bore it with good courage because of her hope in the Lord. She encouraged each of them in the language of their fathers. Filled with a noble spirit, she fired her women's reasoning with a man's courage and said to them, I do not know how you came into being in my womb. It was not I who gave you life and breath, nor I who set in order the elements within each of you. Therefore, the creator of the world, who shaped the beginning of man and devised the origin of all things, will in his mercy give life and breath back to you, again, since you now forget yourselves for the sake of his laws. My son, have pity on me. I carried you nine months in my womb and nursed you for three years and have reared you and brought you up to this point in your life and have taken care of you. I beseech you, my child, to look at the heaven and the earth and see everything that is in them and recognize that God did not make them out of things that existed. Thus also mankind comes into being. Do not fear this butcher, but prove worthy of your brothers. Accept death, so that in God's mercy I may get you back again with your brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ controls us because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once regarded Christ from a human point of view. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We beseech you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing by the cross, of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Verbum Domini.
to be ordained priests come forward. Paul Alexander Griffin. I am present. Christopher King Yi Quinn. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks be to God. I have often said that I would like to celebrate an ordination every day, and I think I am getting my wish uh, these days since uh, Yesterday evening, I ordained uh, two priests for the Archdiocese of Toronto, and today I have also the great joy of ordaining uh, Paul and Christopher to the priesthood for the oratory. And so it is a time of rejoicing for all of us within our community of servants of the Lord, disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, when those who are chosen from amongst the people of God through the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit and through the help of those uh, trusted with their formation, when they step forward for the service of the Lord, the service of his people in the Holy Priesthood. As St. Paul says to Timothy, whom he ordained, he says that you are called to be an ambassador for Christ. And that is what we really are called to do. We are called to be ambassadors for Christ. This is what, uh, as Paul speaks of, as he looks into the world of Corinth in which he wrote and found the world which was very, very uh, far away from the Lord, far away from the gospel. And the ambassador who is called to send out into that type of a world must indeed be given great strength. It is... I think something we need to think about very much in our own life as uh, we reflect upon the world to which uh, Paul and Christopher and all priests and all of us disciples are sent to speak to and to prevent, present the message of the gospel in our own time. We're called to be ambassadors to a world that is even more turned away from the Lord than the rather wild city of Corinth where it was known in those days for a great deal of paganism, a great deal of rejection of the will of God. And yet in the midst of that world, the Lord came, and he came through the instrumentality of the disciples of the Lord, especially those who are ordained to proclaim the gospel. So that's what we celebrate today. We reflect upon the mission of being an ambassador for Christ. And we reflect as well on this day on what is required of someone sent out into that world. We look to the first reading today, and we see uh, in the first reading of the days of the Maccabees, where Antiochus Epiphanes, the great and evil king, was persecuting the people of God. And we see absolute blood being shed in, for the name of the Lord God. We see the heroism of those. Some of them, the Maccabees, went into battle, and some of them, like the, the, uh, the mother and her children, her sons in the first reading today, offered themselves as witnesses to the Lord, through the shedding of their blood, through their fidelity in the face of an alien culture which was trying to stamp out the word of the Lord and the faith of the Hebrew people. I think in many ways that speaks to us, all of us, and particularly to those entrusted with the Holy Priesthood. We're called to be ambassadors, to be witnesses. Witness means martyr, martyrs in Greek. We're called to be witnesses in a world that rejects the gospel of the Lord. 
And in the days of the Maccabees, it sometimes did so in a kind of violent way, but mostly it was insidious. It was presenting the higher culture of the Greeks, which was not really that higher, but it was presenting it as a sophisticated alternative for what was dismissed as the rather primitive worship of the Jewish people. And that won over people to give in to that culture. And so we see the heroic witness of the mother and her sons being a representative of the Lord God in a culture which had rejected God. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to be heroic witnesses not perhaps like many, many, many of our brothers and sisters in the world today, martyrs in the sense of shedding our blood, but we're called to be heroic witnesses in a world which is increasingly starting with canceling us and let who knows what that will lead to in due time. But we need to be attentive to that. That's why heroic witness is called for from all of us as disciples of the Lord and especially from those who are ordained to the holy priesthood. It is something which we need to think about very deeply as we reflect upon the trends in our own society, and also to pray for our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world where it is more obviously like the situation of the Maccabees. So many Christians are being violently persecuted around the world. I think of the book of Revelation. I spent two years studying the last 16 verses of the book of Revelation. Being a rather slow reader, it took me two years to get through the last 16 verses. And you can see there, that was a world in which some were being martyred in blood, as we see the word martyr normally, but others were being lured away into the super sophistication of a corrupt society. They were the Nicolaitans, the ones who were sort of making a deal with society. And so we learn from all of that. And I think all of us, and especially those to be ordained, must be heroic witnesses to the Lord in such a society. And as we reflect upon that, I think of a couple of circumstances that um, speak to me in my own experience during this week, during which these ordinations today and yesterday are occurring. One of them, obviously, today we have uh, a remembrance of uh, the great martyr, oratorian bishop in Spain, Bishop uh, Blessed Salvio, uh, who gave his life for the Lord in a world which had shifted from mere rejection of the faith to violent persecution. And uh, we could see there not only that, he, he gave his life for his parishioners because he, was, uh, he escaped to be with them and then realizing it put them in danger, he offered himself up so as to save the people who were protecting him from being killed by the persecutors. So he really offered himself to the Lord and for those who were uh, protecting him. He offered himself as a heroic witness, as an ambassador into an alien and antagonistic, increasingly in those days, antagonistic world. And he speaks to us of the heroism that is required of the witnesses of Christ in this world. It's interesting, I'm reading the light, his life, how uh, he asked to be shot last so that he could bless the parishioners, the people, his, uh, the ones who were arrested with him, the 20 who were arrested with him. He could bless each of them before they were shot, after they dug their own graves. And uh, it says in one of the accounts I read that he was blessing them with the right hand, they shot his right hand, so he blessed them with his left. Um, there we are. This is a heroic witness until finally he was shot uh, and uh, he gave his ultimate gift to the Lord of witness. That's something we need to think about. Heroic witnesses. Ambassadors to Christ are called to be that, all of us. But I think certainly we expect that of a priest of Jesus Christ. So I reflect upon that on this feast of an oratorian bishop and martyr. But I also think about it in another way. Because earlier this week, uh, I celebrated the funeral mass for a priest who lived to a ripe age of well over 90. He was not, uh, did not live as dramatic a life as uh, the martyr Blessed Salvio. Uh, he led a quiet life, but a life of extraordinary holiness. I didn't know him well. He was a priest of my diocese. I had seen him at events. I'd seen him from place to place, but I didn't really know him well. Uh, it's often said that you really learn about a person at their funeral. And 
I realized how many people were talking about him, about the fact of his extraordinary holiness as his gentleness in the midst of suffering, his extraordinary kindness and love, his quiet service year after year. Nothing dramatic, no guns blazing away, but year after year, decade after decade of holiness. And the, the thought of those who knew him, as I did not know him, who had experienced his ministry, this is a saint. This is a person who quietly was a heroic witness to the Lord. And we may be called to that path, maybe not to die for Christ, but to live for Christ through heroic witness decade after decade, quietly, lovingly, humbly. That too is heroic witness. And even if we are called, as we all are in different ways, to speak out heroically witnessing the faith uh, in a society increasingly turning away from the faith, uh, we also have to be attentive to how we do that. I think of Thomas More and John Fisher, my great heroes, who ended up shedding their blood for Christ. But before that, they tried their best to work in a way that would bring people to Christ. And although it would be far be it for me to speak of the Lion of Munster here, uh, it being not uh, uh, anyway an expert of this, but I do believe it's true, and I stand very much to be corrected, that uh, Bishop Van Gallen didn't say simply, Hitler is an idiot and an evil person. <laughs> he spoke about, I'm sure the Fuhrer does not know that, and then he listed all the crimes. So in order to be able to get the message through, to be a heroic witness in the style of Nathan speaking to King David. And that too is part of the mission which we may be called to undertake. And so if we are to do that, each one of us in our own way, whatever mission the Lord has given to us, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are called therefore to be heroic witnesses, martyrs in that sense. Witnesses perhaps through the shedding of blood as so many are doing these days in many places. Witnesses certainly through the way in which we live our faith in the Lord, in which we articulate it in a way that will reach out and convert the people who are drifting so far away from the Lord. If we are to do that, we must be like the beloved disciple and cling to the cross of Christ. All the rest ran away, but he was there. He was there at the cross, as we see in the gospel today. He was there, and we must be there too. It is from the cross of Christ that we reach out into this world. It is the cross of Christ that gives us our strength to witness to him. And that is what in a very special way Paul and Christopher are being ordained to do and to lead us to be spiritual fathers, to help all of us to do so with integrity and honor, with fidelity, day after day, day after day, until we come before the Lord and pray that we will hear him say to us, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. Dear sons, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as trustworthy co-workers with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God 
for the people entrusted to you, with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing. Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? Paul, do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Christopher, do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and your legitimate superior? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, the Almighty Father, that he pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood. Jesus, or a pro nobis, Sancte Johanna, 
Hear us, we pray, O Lord, our God, and pour out upon these, your servants, the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts those whom we present to your fatherly care for consecration through Christ our Lord. Quid 
Draw near, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ, your Son, and various orders. Already in the earlier covenant there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus in the desert you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles who are consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. To them you added comp companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness these helpers whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood, Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they hold the office second in order, received from you, O God. And by the example of their manner of life, may they inspire right conduct. May they be trustworthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar, and that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined to us, Lord, imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to them and for the whole world. Thus, may the full number of the nations gather together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Yeah. 
sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will handle, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will handle. And conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Peace be with you. And with your spirit.
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings we bring in commemoration of Blessed Salvio be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, so that they may be pleasing to your majesty, just as the shedding of this martyr's blood was precious in your sight, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. 
and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song and adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, that they offer for themselves and all who are here today, for the redemption of their souls.
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for these, your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Firei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us in sign of faith and rest in the sleep of Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him 
and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Salvio faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you. 